What was the key component to winning a championship? I love talking to guys who yeah. won things. Yes. What, what do you think it was? Yeah. Yeah. We open a can of worms with this discussion, this question. Um, yeah. It's, uh, I like to, you know, the culture is number one, right? That group culture, the team culture, I think is absolute, absolutely paramount. If you don't have the winning culture, you're just not, you don't, you're not going to get there. And how it comes together can be many different ways, right? So in the case of the 2004 team, the culture was bred from within the locker room. You had a team of leaders, right? You had uh, you had the Mike O'Shea's, you had the Damon Allens, you had the you know there was the, the Orlando Steinhours, um, but you had some incredibly strong personalities as well. Like we had some guys that were stars in the NFL, uh, you know, maybe had gotten into trouble a little bit in the states. Um, but were phenomenal athletes on the field, right? And so there was a certain dynamic in our locker room of um, that could be a lot of tension. There was some fights occasionally, right? You had, uh, there was, you know, <laughs> you know, after post game, guys running into the locker room and commenting on blaming guys on the team for a moment, in t- like something that happened on the field and, and a leader like Mike O'Shea would step up, grab, grab someone and say, hey, you know what? There was three things you did wrong during that game. Three things that you could have done differently that could have impacted that game. Don't you dare start pointing the finger at other people, right? And um, so there were moments like that that would pull the group together. And it's like, yeah. And then the next day, that guy that screwed up would come in and say, hey, Osh, you know what? You're right, right? And it was a guy that was, you know, you'd never expect him to apologize, right? And, and would apologize. And just that, that, I, would, that would, I would consider that a pivot point in a season where, just two dynamic, really strong personalities. Something would happen based off of leadership, you know, a moment where a leader took over in the locker room, did something, and someone responded in a way that a lot of people wouldn't think, but their response just made the, the group glue, turned everyone into glue, oh, yeah. right? So, yeah, I call that like a pivot moment or, you know, kind of a, and, and there was there was a couple pivot moments that season, right? And um, where it all just started to come together. And, uh, you know, going into that Grey Cup game, we were not the favorite. We we're playing the BC Lions, and uh, where was the game? It was in Ottawa. Yeah, great place to play football. Lands cool. downfield. Cool. Yeah, awesome. And um, you know they had uh, gone through some quarterback dynamics that season, and there was a lot of controversy on their side with the BC Lions. I think overall they had quite the you know a better record than we did. Um, but yeah, things just ended up coming together. Pinball was our head coach. That's another piece of the pie that was an incredibly strong dynamic, right? Pinball has a has a great skill. He has, uh, you know, he obviously can, uh, he's he got a way of connecting with groups of people, but one-on-one, he also can connect with everybody, right? So he's just such a unique person, right? He'll take the time that, I mean, you could bump into him at the grocery store one time, introduce yourself, have a conversation with you. He'll ask you five questions about you, right? Even though you want to talk about him, he'll want to talk about you, right? And then he'll see you a year later and he'll remember your name. No. Right? Yeah, he'll remember your name, right? And he's just a very... It, Sorry, you go. Yeah. yeah, no, but you, you know, got people like that don't come along very often, right? And he's someone that you know, could, and so with that, he could connect with everyone in the locker room, right? And head coaches don't often do that, and that's fine. There's different styles for head coaches, but the group that we had, we needed to have a guy like Pinball that could connect with everyone and pull the best out of everybody, right? And and the message, you know, his message to one guy would be completely different than the message to another guy. And Hey, we need your best, mm-hmm. right? And he could pull that best out in, in different ways. And, um, it's pretty awesome to be in an environment that have an opportunity to be in that environment, to, to learn from, from his messaging and the, what he was trying to do. He was all about creating better men, period, right? He's like, you become a better person, a better man, a better family man, a better parent, a better husband, a better boyfriend. You're going to be a better football player. Right. And that we heard that like every quarter, you know, like we heard that in the, f- the first four games, we heard it in the next four games, we heard it in the next four games. And that was the foundation of the messaging he was trying to, you know, the culture he was trying to embed with the team. And, um, the guys wouldn't talk about that afterwards. Right. But you just hear it. They, they all re- connected with it. They're like, yeah, cause every, everybody had something that was going on too. Right. Like, you know, CFL, you're not the highest paid athlete. You had a lot of guys, you think about that locker room where half the team is Americans Half the team were coming from huge programs in the States where they were held on a pedestal. Their dream was to make it to the NFL, and they didn't make it. And now they were in the CFL making a tenth or even less, a fifth of what they could have been making in the NFL. 
So their dreams were sliding down fast. So the messaging, and so when you get in that environment, guys can go off the handle. They disappear in the city of Toronto. That's a big city. There's a lot of stuff going on. If you're not, things aren't going well, you can get into trouble easily. Um, so pinball was, you know, just trying to, you know, a lot of these guys were, again, he's trying to get the best out of all these phenomenal athletes where some of them, their confidence had started to fade and pin found a way to lift everybody and get everybody together. And man, did we have a good team win it all, you know, when we were all wow. clicking. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. That's. Yeah. When you said guys would fight and then the next day they would come back in and say, you know what? You were right. I wonder if they had a conversation with pinball before they came into the room the next day to say, you know what? You were right. Like where did their mind switch? I wonder if, you know, it's like, maybe, you know, like maybe, you know what? Maybe. And, uh, in, in the particular scenario, I don't think so. You know, there was, um, but in some cases, yes, you know, and pin would maybe just have a word on the side and say, listen, you can walk into that locker room and have the guy understand that the way you walk in the locker room tomorrow or the way you walk in the locker room today can impact where our team goes just simply by, by what you say, right? You're that strong of a personality and having guys understand that you're such an incredi- a, a critical piece of this team, everybody, right? Like all of the parts count, right? No single individual is greater than the, the sum of its parts in, in football, not even close in every sports. That's the, that's the case, but we would really preach that, right? And um, just, you know, preaching that group and that fit in mentality, right? And, uh, you know, there was uh, an acronym on uh, <laughs> FIFO was was written on the board in in the uh, defensive F- locker room. FIFO, FIFO, F I F I F O, fit fit in or fudge off. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Bottom line, I like that. <laughs> right, and that was that was the uh, that was the focus. Right, that was what it was all about. Check your ego at the door. It's not about you. It's about what we're trying to do together. Right, and and you and we're talking strong personalities, like where I said where these guys were. You know, it's all about me. In, in some of those environments, but we were trying to build something that, no, it's not all about you. It's about us. Right. And, yeah. and, you, and you need to buy into it. Right. If we're going to be successful, you need to buy into it. So that culture was where uh, it's one that everyone bought in, everyone bought in and, um, to, to, uh, yeah, to be a part of it was, was quite something. And, uh, yeah. So that wow. was the 2004 Grey Cup team. Which yeah. one's the 2004 ring? Yeah. That's the old four ring right there. Can we hold Yeah. It? Yeah. There you go. Actually, just tell me if that's yeah. on the, yeah. is it? Yeah, let that focus in there. Is it focused? Yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Great yeah. Cup champion. Oh, it has your name on it too. Yeah. Is that you were number 33? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Right. yeah. Toronto, 131 years. Yeah. See it? That's way, yeah. that's heavy. That's a paperweight. Where do yeah. you, where do you keep it at home? Yeah, we keep it in a in a safe place. Keep yeah. it in a safe. Don't, I, I don't, don't wear it very wear. often. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we had some phenomenal owners then. Um, David Cinnamon and Howard Howard Sokolowski, highly engaged ownership, where you know they would come through the locker room. Hey Jeff, how's it going? Really? Right? That's How, nice. How's it going? Do you have what you need to be successful? And that's another thing that I th- I'm a big believer in. You know, you're trying to build a culture. You need to talk to your people, and yeah, have them understand. Do you have what you need? And you know. The guys like uh, Mike O'Shea would, you know, talk about, you know, someone making a mistake on a play, right? And right away, most people would say, hey, it's that guy's fault. Well, wait a minute. Did that guy, was he given the tools to be successful, right, in that particular play? Maybe he's running against someone that, you know, is a lot faster, right? Well, then you need to, you know, help help that person understand from a strategy perspective, what do you need to do to win that battle? Like just trying to chase, you know, run them down side by side, you're not going to win. Mm. So then you need to try something different. And, um, and, uh, so yeah, these, these owners would just kind of engage with the guys and come back to, Hey, you know what, how are you doing? And they wanted to understand the culture. Did you, know, do you guys have what you need to have, you know, what you need to be successful? And yeah, they pulled together an un- incredibly winning team for a bunch of years. And in, in 2004, we ended up getting that cup. 